Bongo. I'm Rory. I'm Twang. I'm Boots. season of the year has its own special thing. For instance, the spring, when the earth wakes up after its long winter sleep and the buds and shoots begin to grow. Summer, with the hot sun shining. Autumn, when the trees turn brown and gold. Winter and the snow. But can you imagine what it would be like if the seasons got all mixed up? One fine summer's day, Boots, Bongo, Twang and I decided to do a little sunbathing in the garden. I'll get the deck chairs, said Twang. I'll get our sunglasses, said Boots. And I'll get some books to read, said Bongo. And I'll make us some nice long cool drinks, I said. We all hurried round and collected everything together, and very soon we were ready to go out into the garden and lie in the sun. Bongo opened the door and... Imagine our amazement when we looked out into the garden. For instead of seeing the green grass and the bright flowers, all we could see was... Snow! There we stood, laden with deck chairs, ice drink, sunglasses, suntan oil, and watched as large snowflakes slowly drifted down from the sky. Ah, uh, it's snowing, said Twang. And it's, uh, August, said Boots. It shouldn't be snowing in August, I said. Something must be wrong. Come on. Where are we going? Twang asked as we put on our thick woolly scarves and our big woolly gloves. We're going to see the snowman, Dr. Frosty, that's who. And we all hurried out to the discovery. Frosty the snowman was a jolly happy soul With a corncob pipe and a button nose and two eyes made out of coal Frosty the snowman was a fairy tale they say it was made of snow, but the children know how it came to life one day. There must have been some magic in that old silk hat they found. When they placed it on his head, he began to dance around. But Frosty the snowman was alive as he could be. And the children say he could laugh and play just the same as you and me. The sun was hot that day, so he said, let's run and have some fun before I melt away. Down to the village with a broomstick in his hand, running here and there all around the square, saying, catch me if you can. There must have been some magic in that old silk hat they found. For when they placed it on his head, he began to dance around. But Frosty the snowman had to hurry on his way But he waved goodbye as he melted away Saying I'll be back someday Frosty the snowman knew 
the sun was hot that day. So he said, let's run and have some fun before I melt away. Down to the village with a broomstick in his hand. Running here and there all around the square, singing, catch me if you can. There must have been some magic in that old silk hat they found. When they placed it on his head, he began to dance around. A frosty snowman had to hurry on his way. But he waved goodbye as he melt away, saying, I'll be back someday. But he waved goodbye as he melt away, saying, I'll be back someday. Now, Dr. Frosty the Snowman lives in the Crystal Palace high in the snow-capped mountains. Actually, it isn't palace at all but a gigantic snow factory. Of course, usually in the summer the factory is silent and deserted, but when we arrived, the whole place was a hive of activity. Uh, yes, said the snowman frostily. What can I do for you? It's about the snow, I began. The snowman gave us an icy stare. What about it? Are you complaining? Uh, well, yes, we are. Dr. Frosty's eyes opened wide in surprise. You are? I, I, I can't believe it. My snow is of the very highest quality. Come, come, see for yourself. And before we could say another word, Dr. Frosty rushed into the factory, waving us to follow. First, we went into a large room filled with huge mountains of glistening white foam. Now this, said Dr. Frosty before we could speak, is, is where it all starts. We gather all the finest sea foam, uh, the finest, mind you, and we pass it through this crystallizer. Here he pointed to a huge clanking whirring machine. It comes out here, he dashed into the next room, in large sheets, as you can see, uh, which are cut into the right size by my helpers here, uh, with the aid of their ice sickles. What happens then? asked Twain. This way, shouted Dr. Frosty, rushing away into the next room. This is the flaking room, he said when we'd all caught up with him again. Each individual snowflake is stamped out on this machine, and there are never two alike. You mean that every snowflake that falls is different, I said. Shh, of course. Any snowflake that's the same as another, or has more or less than six sides, is rejected immediately. Uh, and now for the packing and delivery. Once more, Dr. Frosty rushed off. This is my delivery man, uh, Jack Frost. Hello, he said. Jack Frost smiled. Hail, he said, and continued loading great shovelfuls of gleaming white snowflakes into large grey clouds. So, you see, what could you possibly complain of? Snow in August, said Boots. A great silence fell. Ah, uh, that's wrong, isn't it? We nodded. The snowman pulled out a great pocket watch and held it up to his ear. It stopped! It's not arcticking, look! We looked at the watch. Indeed, it had stopped at a quarter past winter. It must have stopped last year and I didn't notice. Oh, well, uh, that's no business. By the time we arrived home again, the sun was shining and all the snow had melted, and we were able to sunbathe after all. But, you know, if Dr. Frosty's watch ever goes wrong again, it could snow in the middle of your summer holidays. <laughs> Bye. Ta-ra. Goodbye. So long, cats. <laughs>